Hi guys, welcome back to the Tech Chat, where today I'm reviewing the Asus Zenpad S 8.0. This little 8-inch Android tablet has a stunning display, a premium design, and feels responsive to use. But it's not perfect. I don't think I've ever used an Android tablet with so much bloatware pre-installed on it. It's a bit ridiculous. And the quad-core uh, Intel chip isn't the most powerful, but considering the Zenpad S is just £150 or $180, I think it's great value for money, and gives the Galaxy Tab S2 8.0, and even the iPad Mini 4 a run for their money. So this is the Zenpad S, which is the higher end, more premium version of the normal Zenpad. Specifically, this model, the Z5 ATC, runs Android 5 and features a 1.8 GHz Intel Atom Z3 560 processor alongside 2 GB of RAM. In terms of storage, you can get it in 16, 32 or 64 GB options, although some storage models are only available in certain territories. But the good news is that all of them support microSD, so you can expand the memory up to 128 GB. Now let's talk about the design. The Zenpad is available in black or white and I think has quite a unique look and feel to it, which I actually really like. The 8 inch display is protected by Gorilla Glass 3 and has an impressive 74% screen to body ratio, which means for its screen size it's a relatively compact tablet compared to say the iPad mini's 70% ratio. So a combination of the thin bezels and the chromy uh, plastic accent around the outside makes the Zenpad look quite stylish. But I think the back is actually even better looking uh, with a combination of a plastic sort of cross hatched metal finish and also a little leather strip along the left side of the device which offers quite a nice visual contrast as well as providing a bit more grip when using it left-handed. The smooth plastic isn't especially slippy, uh, I never felt it's going to fall out of my hand or anything, uh, which is probably uh, thanks to the fact that it is a fairly small tablet being 8 inches, but also the fact that it's 4.3 aspect ratio, so it's uh, more like an iPad than a, uh, a 16 by 9 traditional longer Android tablets. And so those things together make it quite easy to hold. One thing I don't like though is the power and the volume buttons on the right hand side of the device. They have almost no travel, no feedback, so it's really difficult to tell if you press the power button. And taking a screenshot by uh, pressing and holding the power button and volume down rocker is far more of a challenge than I think it should be. But at just 6.9mm thick and weighing 317 grams, it is incredibly thin and light and portable. It may not use the most premium materials, but it does give the impression of being quite a classy little number. But as nice as the tablet's body is, the display is even more impressive, thanks to the incredibly sharp 2048 by 1536 resolution, which translates to 320 pixels per inch. But what actually what hits you the first time you turn it on is just how brilliant and vivid the display is. It's not the brightest at about a maximum of 300 nits, uh, which is quite a bit lower than, say, the Galaxy Tab S2, which has about 420 nits, but viewing angles are fantastic and the colors really pop. Everything from browsing the web to uh, watching videos and playing games looks fantastic fantastic on this display. But we do need to be careful we don't mistake saturation and vibrancy for color accuracy. As according to Laptop Mag, who ran some tests on the display, uh, the Zenpad scored 91.7% in the sRGB color gamut test, which is very impressive. But what's not quite so good is the fact that it scored just 6.7 in the Delta E test, which uh, compared to other Android tablets uh, means the, color, the colors aren't that accurate. So it is vivid, it is bold, it is punchy, but it's not necessarily the most accurate or true to life. But what's it like to use? Well, swiping between home screens feels uh, fluid, but unfortunately the Zenpad S doesn't handle intensive apps and graphically intensive games as well as you might hope. Real Racing 3 is one of the best looking games you can get on the Android store, but the frame rate and the graphical quality isn't quite as good as what I've come to expect, having played it on other tablets like the Galaxy Tab S2 and also the iPad uh, Mini 4. I think it comes down to the fact that the Intel chip just isn't powerful enough to get the higher frame rates most of us have come to expect uh, since a lot of us have quite powerful smartphones. Benchmarks aren't particularly impressive either, scoring a very average 50,900 in the Antutu benchmark. However, considering the price of the Zenpad S and the fact that it does only struggle a little bit uh, in the most intensive graphically demanding games, I don't think we can criticize it too much, especially when we consider the price as I say £150 or $180. But what I can criticize is Asus's Zen UI skin which sits on top of the Android 5 software. There's nothing fundamentally wrong with it aside from looking a bit dated in certain parts, but my biggest gripe is the amount of bloatware that is pre-installed on the tablet. To be blunt, I've never seen so much crap on a tablet. We've got apps like Live Water, Photo Collage, Omelette Chat, Puffin, Zen, Circle, and Splendid, just to name a few. There's nearly a dozen apps on here that don't need to be there uh, and I'd never use. And if you've just bought the base 16 gigabyte model, uh, you're gonna be probably rationing storage anyway so the first thing you should do is uninstall all this rubbish, all this bloatware. So it's a bit frustrating, but it does only take a few minutes to uninstall them, so it's not a deal breaker, it's just a little bit annoying. But one feature I do like, and I wish more tablets and even phones supported it these days, is the double tap to wake. So uh, double tap on the screen, 
wakes us up. It takes a second or so, but it's still pretty useful. In terms of battery, it's solid, but not particularly impressive. Although often I did find that the tablet had completely run out of power uh, after a couple of days of not using it. So clearly the standby life is a big battery drain, but that is something Android 6, uh, hopefully when we get it on here, will uh, fix because the Doze feature does significantly improve the standby life. For now though, I get around six to seven hours of web surfing and general use out of it. It's not terrible, but it doesn't quite match the iPad mini for battery performance and will probably uh, require a charge every other day or so. In terms of audio quality, the Zenpad S has dual front-facing speakers, which is great to see, but unfortunately they're pretty terrible. Hi guys, welcome back to the Tech Chat. Now, they sound incredibly tinny, there's almost no bass, and although you do get a stereo effect when you're watching movies and playing games, uh, you're still probably best off using a pair of headphones. As you'd expect, the Zenpad features a front and rear camera boasting 5 and 8 megapixels uh, respectively. I won't spend too much time talking about the cameras because, a bit like the speakers, they're also pretty rubbish. I took a few photos and it seemed to suffer from a lack of dynamic range with light areas being completely blown out uh, and the images just generally lack detail and colour. Overall, a bit disappointing really. So while the cameras may not be anything special, what is interesting about the Zenpad S is it features a USB 3 Type-C port, which is actually quite rare and great to see on a relatively budget sort of slash mid-range tablet. The benefits of a USB Type-C uh, port, which I uh, have the cable for here, is that it's completely reversible when it plugs into the uh, port on the uh, tablet itself and also comes along with faster data transfer and also faster charging speeds, which is great to see. It's not a huge, uh, you know, huge thing, but it's uh, definitely nice to see and does future-proof the tablet a little bit more. So the Zenpad S 8.0 isn't without its faults. The bloatware is imposing, the cameras uh, and the speakers are pretty weak and performance isn't quite good enough for some of the most intensive apps and games. But having said that, I do still quite like it. And while there are still fundamental issues uh, with uh, Android tablets in terms of uh, sort of the uh, Google Play Store compared to the iOS Store, I think this is still one of the best sort of mid-sized Android tablets you can buy right now. It looks stylish, the screen is absolutely beautiful, and most everyday tasks feel pretty responsive and smooth to use. And while it is also half the price of the iPad Mini 4, so it's much, much better value for money. So if you're in the market for a capable but budget-friendly Android tablet and aren't too bothered it doesn't run real racing three of the highest frame rates, then the Zenpad S 8.0 is a great choice. So I hope you found this review helpful. Let me know what you think about the Zenpad and Android tablets in general in the comments below. Please do like and subscribe if you enjoy my videos and I'll see you again right here on the Tech Channel.